His apostles come to him and say, you know, what will the sign of your coming be and what will the end of the age be? First thing Yeshua is worried about is the level of deception that will exist before he comes back. Unprecedented deception. And then you go to verse 24 in chapter 24, and it says, if it were possible, even the elect are going to be taken out. He goes on to talk about nations. You'll hear of, of wars and rumors of wars. Interesting. Nations will rise against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. And then he talks about a great persecution that comes against the church, unlike never before. I mean, this is what Yeshua is describing in Matthew 24 is horrific tribulation. Do you know there's only two names mentioned in that entire chapter? Only two. And it is Noah and the prophet Daniel. I want to take you to the extremely and highly prophetic book uh, known as the book of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold. Now let me ask you, what is the purpose of this image? Was this simply a decorative image? This image is being made for one exclusive purpose. And that is for all humanity to come and fall down and worship before it. There's one specific description that is attached to this image. And that is the following. Its height was 60 cubits. Its width was six cubits. 90 feet high, nine feet wide. That's a pretty significant image. But here's what's amazing is you'll notice that made an image of gold, very generic, and nowhere will you find through the text that there's any description that Nebuchadnezzar made this in the image of himself. He didn't. But what is being described here is an image of that of an obelisk. An obelisk image. We still have these images today. Check this out. Vatican obelisk, St. Peter's Square. Right in the middle of St. Peter's Square is featured this obelisk. Let me give you a better picture here. This one's better. And here you have this, and this is an Egyptian, I mean, authentically Egyptian obelisk, 4,500 years old. And you ask yourself, what is it? This is an important bit of information. The obelisk, the Egyptians literally designed these things to venerate the sun god Ra. It is an object, specifically an image to connect with this false pagan god. This is a pagan idol. I want to take this into the spiritual realm. And the way I want to do this is I want to show you some commentary by Irenaeus. And for those of you who are not familiar with Irenaeus, this is an early church father who in the second century, this guy was profound. He's one of the most prolific. If, if, if you're one of those people that is a, the early church father buff and you love the early church fathers, uh, virtually everyone I know who fancies themselves a student of the early church fathers, Irenaeus is in the top three favorites. He talks about the Antichrist. He gets into a discussion about the Antichrist and he gives a commentary that directly relates to the dimensions in our story. Therefore, shall his, meaning the Antichrist name, possess the number 666. He sums up in his own person. In other words, he's talking about the Antichrist in his behavior, in his character, in who he is. There is a sum. All the commixture of wickedness which took place before, uh, took place previous to the deluge, meaning the flood, due to the apostasy of the angels. In other words, the Antichrist is the entire embodiment of all the sin that took place before the flood. We continue. For Noah was 600 years old. When the deluge came upon the earth, sweeping away the rebellious world for the sake of of that most infamous generation which lived in the times of Noah. And so it's interesting, Irenaeus recognizes what most of us recognize today. Obviously, the, the flood, one of the most pivotal moments in time, no question about it. But isn't it interesting how Irenaeus is looking at this and says, this is an identification moment. This is a special marker in Scripture. 
a marker that demands our total attention. Let me ask you, how many times did the, did the Lord destroy the earth? Yeah, once, last time I checked. One time. Now, does that draw a special attention? Absolutely. There is no question about it. It draws special attention. And specifically hones in on one thing, a detail that is as peculiar as the dimensions that were given in regard to the idol. And that is the fact that Noah is 600 years old. And the Antichrist also sums up every air of devised idols since the flood, together with the slain of the prophets and the cutting off of the just. For that image, which was set up by Nebuchadnezzar, had indeed a height of 60 cubits, while the breadth was six cubits, on account of which Ananias, Azarias, and Misael, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they did not worship it, were cast into a furnace of fire, pointing out prophetically by what happened to them, the wrath against the righteous, which shall arise toward, uh, towards the time of the end. Now, did you get what he just Everything he just brought together, let me put this in simple terms. First, he comes out and says, okay, in regard to the Antichrist, we got to understand, we go back to the flood, this marker, this key marker, and it is mentioned about how Noah was 600 years old when God unleashed hell on the inhabitants. He's 600 when this happens. And then you go to the image. He says, the other marker that we have is in the book of Daniel, in our story, our feature story today. And the dimensions, interestingly enough, are 60 cubits by 6 cubits, and then you have 666. You know, one thing that I appreciate right off the bat, Irenaeus, to identify the beast, even the number of the beast, he doesn't go outside of Scripture. Now, just stop and take that in for a moment. Might, if God has revealed the number of the beast to John in the book of Revelation, might we, and it's supposed to be doing math, might we look to the word, scripture itself, as the key to unlock the mystery? Is Nebuchadnezzar asking the inhabitants of the earth anything difficult? Is he asking for their firstborn? Is he asking for the bank accounts? Is he asking for the assets? Is he asking for your homes? Is he asking for any of this? It's interesting, he's not. Physically speaking, what he is asking is nothing. It's, it's almost innocent. Just bow down and honor, pay homage to this image. You know, it's those moments, and I kid you not, that if you do not have the commandments of God, locked in your heart, where you are committed to them, where you are going to hear the voice of the Lord more than you will hear any other voice, many, many believers are going to bow. Hey there, this is Mike at Corner Fringe Ministries, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch our video. We hope that it blessed you and it encouraged you. And if it did, please hit the thumbs up on the video and share it with your friends and family. It's also, if you haven't already considered, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, if you'd like to watch the entire video, click on this link. And if you'd like to watch the entire series and learn more about what we, we do and believe here at Corner Fringe Ministries, click on this link. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching the video, and we hope to see you again soon. Shalom.